It's a peaceful place where people come at night to do their washing. It's nothing much on the outside, just a little glass-fronted store full of washing machines tucked in between the other stores on your average street. And if you've passed it in the daylight, you probably wouldn't have noticed it at all. It's at nighttime when the midnight launderette really comes into its own. Tranquility descends as the light outside fades and the customers arrive. They load up the machines with their laundry and quietly wait for the night to wash away the day. Oh wow, can you smell that? It's that clean laundry smell, steam and heat, a tiny sharp touch of detergent. There are eight big washing machines lined up along two sides of the room and a set of tumble dryers on the third side. The washing machines are the color of pistachio ice cream with gleaming silver rings around their glass doors. Some of them are in use and you can see the knots of color bumping around inside. The tumble dryers are entirely silver. They're so shiny you can almost see your face in them. There's a wooden bench along the fourth side of the room where the window is for customers to sit as they wait. There's very little talking in the midnight laundrette. Just soothing companionship amid the gentle bump and churn of the machines. Being here is a bit like being indoors on a rainy day. You're warm and safe, sitting on a long wooden bench, watching the washing go round and round. Each machine's glass door is a little porthole through which a mini rainstorm can be seen. There are rivulets of water welling up on the insides of these doors. The doors are thick and curved like the glass of a soda bottle. Inside one machine you can see little pockets of foam gather at the bottom and then disperse as the drum swishes rapidly from side to side. The clothes seem to resolve themselves into a smile, as if to say, Look how clean we're getting. Every now and then a car passes in the street outside. Whoosh. And the sound blends in with the whir of the machines. The occasional gurgle as water drains. The ting of a zip or the click of a heavy button against the metal of the drum and the happy sighs of the customers. In the corner of the laundrette, there's a little nook with a chair in it. This is where Rita sits. Rita is the Midnight Laundrette's manager, and she oversees everything. She isn't here every night. It's a self-service laundrette after all, but she is tonight. Rita wears a patterned scarf tied over her hair with a floral apron. She doesn't mind mixing and matching. She's a colorful lady. Sometimes, she dozes off, lulled to sleep by the sound of her machines. She'll have stretched her feet out, tired, slightly swollen feet which she's resting on top of her pink rubber clogs. You can see some flecks of polish left on her toenails from the loving but inexpert pedicure her granddaughter gave her a few weeks ago and she'll have clasped her hands across her stomach 
and shut her eyes for just a moment. Next thing you know, her head is drooping forward onto the big, splashy flowers adorning her apron. If you have any questions about the best washing cycle for your particular needs, read as your woman. There's something about the lighting in the Midnight Laundrette. It's just the right kind. Not too dim, not too bright. You'd probably expect to find some kind of strip lighting in a place like this. Well, it's nothing like that. Oh no. This is a warm, reassuring light. And where exactly it comes from? Well, that's a question. It must be cleverly tucked away in little nooks in the ceiling somehow. This is just a very loving kind of light. And guess what? It makes you feel lovely. Yuki is one of tonight's customers. He comes to the Midnight Launderette quite often to wash his uniform. Yuki works at a play factory for kids, and a lot of the play involves slime. He has to wash his uniform a lot. Yuki takes his uniform out of an old leather sports bag. His uniform consists of khaki chinos, and a variety of different colored Airtex shirts with the words Play Factory printed on them in big letters. He opens the door of the washing machine and tumbles his clothes into the drum, then shuts the door firmly. He pushes back his floppy black hair, which has fallen over his face. Yuki's friends always tell him he needs a haircut, but he likes it long the back part of it caught in the collar of his jacket. He likes to keep his jacket on indoors. Yuki empties his detergent into the soap drawer. Fine white grains with little dots of pink and blue in it. He selects a vigorous cycle and pushes the big button that sets it going. The machine begins to whir. Yuki pushes back his hair again and sits down on the bench to wait. Diane is washing delicates. She runs a vintage clothing emporium and she owns a lot of silk tea dresses. She isn't wearing one tonight though. She's wearing a pair of cut-off jeans with rips all over. You can tell they're the kind of rips that have come about over time. They weren't bought that way. Her t-shirt has a palm tree print. You'd never know she's usually attired in silk and vintage knitwear. Diane has already been here for some time and her machine beeps unobtrusively to let her know the cycle is finished. She opens the door and gently pulls her garments into a plastic washing basket. The delicate's wash doesn't go through a spin cycle, so each item is dark and heavy with water. Diane lives nearby. She'll be taking her damp dresses home in the washing basket where she can dry them flat to protect them from stretching. She leaves the door of the washing machine ajar to let the damp air out and picks up her basket.